Hi friends, in this series of uh, trip to diagnosis, I will be uploading videos regarding diagnosis of various congenital anomalies that we come across while doing fetal ultrasound. This is the first video of the series. Now in this video, let's see about ventricular septal defects and its types and where they are located and how it can be diagnosed by the fetal ultrasound. First, let us see the classification of the VSTs. In this picture, we can see the sagittal section of the right side of the fetal heart, where you can see uh, the SVC and IVC draining into the right atrium. Followed by that, this is the tricuspid valve and this is the right ventricle. We know that there are three parts in the right ventricle. One is inlet, the other one is apical part and the third one is the outlet part. And we know that the right ventricle has more trabeculations when compared to the left ventricle. And this area is called crista ventricularis. And this is very important landmark in the right ventricle because this will help us in classifying the location of the VSTs. Now, let's see the various type of VSTs based on their location. Next, we can look into inlet VST. It is also called atrioventricular septum type. It is located posterior to the septal leaflet of the tricuspid valve. We can see the uh, VST in this image and uh, the frequency is around 5 to 8 percent. The next VST is muscular VST, also called trabecular VST. It can be apical, midmuscular or multiple. When it is small, multiple and close together, it gives the appearance of Swiss cheese and it is called Swiss cheese septum. The frequency of this muscular VST is around 5 to 20 percent. Now the next VST is the outlet VST, superior to the crista ventricularis and hence it is called supracrystal VSTs. It is located under the pulmonary valve and above the supraventricular crest as I have mentioned already. The frequency is around 5 to 7 percent. The next comes the perimembranous VST. It is also called infracrystal VST or conoventricular VST. Conoventricular VST is the terminology given specifically to one of its types like the perimembranous VST is divided into two types. It can be aligned or malaligned VST. The aligned VST is called membranous VST and the malaligned VST are generally called conoventricular VST. Now what is aligned and mal aligned I will demonstrate later with the pictures. The location of this VST is in the outflow tract but beneath the aortic valve and it is under the supraventricular crest. As you can see here it is marked as perimembranous VST in the diagram and you can see that this is the commonest VST that we come across in the fetal ultrasound. It is around 70 to 80 percent. This is the uh, normal apical four chamber view showing the interventricular septum and the offsetting of the valves. According to me it is uh, mandatory to see the heart in the apical view before completing a fetal cardiac examination. This is based on my experience in the fetal medicine for over 10 years. Now let's see the uh, membranous ventricular septal defect. It is best visualized in the five chamber view. Now let us take the normal uh, five chamber view. Here you can see the line diagram of the five chamber view as well as the ultrasound uh, uh, image of the uh, five chamber view. These are all the normal images. We prefer the uh, five chamber view because it is in this view 
that the membranous septum is perpendicular to the ultrasound beam. When you take the apical four chamber view, we need not even lift the probe from the maternal abdomen. Just, just tilting the probe a little bit, cephalid, will give you this five chamber view. I would like to give an important tip here. You can see in this line diagram, I have clearly marked the area of the uh, membranous VST which is located apical to the or below the aortic valve. This is because we can have uh, echo dropouts resembling the membranous ventricular septal defect after the location of the uh, aortic valve which may be because of the origin of the coronary arteries. So this or uh, these uh, echo dropouts are commonly confused with the membranous ventricular septal defect. So when you suspect a membranous ventricular septal defect, we should make sure that it is located below as you can remember from the previous slides where we um, studied the location of the VST, it is located below the aortic valve. So just make sure that it is below the aortic valve and then confirm the diagnosis. Now let's see the membranous ventricular septal defect with abnormal ultrasound image in detail. We already know that the best view to identify this uh, membranous VST is the LVOT view or the 5 chamber view where uh, the septo aortic continuity is best appreciated as it is perpendicular to the ultrasound beam. Now in this uh, VST, the aortic or the tricuspid valve will always be in the picture as the border of the defect. Now this can be better understood, this uh, line can be better understood if you see into the first picture. Uh, to easy visualization of the uh, membranous VST I have uh, marked with the uh, circle. You can see that it is bordered by tricuspid valve on the one side on the uh, other side it is below the aortic valve. And uh, you can very well see that it is subaortic in location. So in this type of VST there will not be overwriting. That is there is no mal alignment. It is aligned VST. It is aligned VST. That is, the iota has not shifted anywhere when compared to the septum, interventricular septum. So it is in alignment. What is in alignment? The septo aortic continuity, although disrupted, it is in aligned position. If one starts from four chamber view and sees superiorly, the defect will be seen just as aortic valve comes into view. This is nothing but the five chamber view. So. This should always be confirmed by the color Doppler which will show bidirectional flow. And this membranous VST is commonly associated with truncal anomaly or aneuploidy. Now this is the image of uh, RVOT view or circle sausage view of right ventricular outflow tract. You can see both the location of the tricuspid valve and the aortic valve. The blue arrow marked in both pictures represent the membranous VST, location of the membranous VST. So this view you can use as an additional view to confirm the membranous VST or in case if you have a echo dropout resembling a membranous VST and you have a doubt, you can just go for this image and then reconfirm your finding. Now coming to the next defect which is conoventricular septal defect. This is nothing but as we saw in the previous classification types it is actually a perimembranous VST but a perimembranous VST which is mal aligned is called um, conoventricular septal defect and be isolated or uh, most frequently it is associated with other defects like uh, tetralogy of uh, fallow in the case of anterior uh, mal alignment or anterior uh, deviation of the conoseptum uh, we can have a tetralogy of fallow uh, where you will have narrow pulmonary artery due to the anterior deviation of the conal septum or we can have interrupted aortic arch 
or uh, aortic arch uh, hypoplasia in the case of posterior displacement of uh, the coronal septum so that is called posterior malalignment the coronal uh, septum is deviated either anteriorly or posteriorly one of the outflow tract is commonly associated with the obstruction it has high association with right aortic arch the commonly associated uh, one is anterior malalignment that is aorta overriding however the pulmonary artery overriding can also be seen now let's see the atrioventricular canal type of vst it is also known as perimembranous vst it is best diagnosed in the four chamber view the defect must be seen when av valves are in view that is when we see the defect the av valves must be also be seen in the same plane because they serve as the border of the defect suppose if we see the aortic valve in the same picture as the vst in the same plane as the vst then what are we supposed to do then we should rethink the diagnosis because only in the case of membranous vst we saw that the in the five chamber view aortic valves will be seen so when we see vst along with the aortic valve then it should be either membranous vst or it is not av canal type of vst so we should rethink about it now we should also carefully inspect to exclude primum avst or common av valve when we have isolated av canal type of avst we should also look to exclude primum avst or common av valve or avst now coming to the subpulmonic or conoseptal avst this is the least common type of vst can be confused with membranous vst in some views in this vst it is not bordered by tricuspid valve unlike the membranous vst also that the defect lies close to the pulmonary valve remember the picture where we had crista ventricularis and superior to the crista ventricularis we had this subpulmonic or conoseptal vst so this short axis imaging is the best view to distinguish membranous and the conoseptal defect now let's see the conoseptal defect with the ultrasound image and the line diagram we can see the rvot view or the circle sausage view in this image we can see that the vst is located just below the pulmonary valve it is not close to the tricuspid valve as we saw in subaortic or perimembranous vst where it was located close to the tricuspid valve whereas here it is located close to the or just below the pulmonary valve now let's see the last type of uh, vst muscular vst they do not have any valves as the borders it can be identified in apical and uh, transverse four chamber view so to differentiate from the artifact the borders of the vst will generally appear echogenic but majority of the times this type of vst is accidentally detected by routine use of color doppler the shunt on the doppler is typically bidirectional most common locations of such vsts are apical and in the mid portion of the septum now we have come to the end of the session in this session we saw the various types of vst their uh, location how they are classified and how to diagnose them in ultrasound and how to avoid the artifacts all this we saw in detail In this presentation I have recreated anomalies using normal images and line diagram. 
the next step for you will be to look into the abnormal images in the internet and compare them with these images to better understand the pathology and so the diagnosis will be uh, easy when you come across the pathology thank you all